Members, if I could ask you to take your seats. Thank you, members. Um, I advise that the special meeting of council will be live streamed to the City of Adelaide website and recording will also be published to the internet. Sorry, let's open the special meeting of Tuesday the 29th of uh, June. Please note that an audio and visual recording will be taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and that any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transfer outside of Australia. Item one, which is our acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Item two is our acknowledgement of Colonel William Light. The council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Uh, members, I have two apologies tonight, uh, Councillor Martin and Councillor Donovan. Uh, Councillor Martin on leave and Councillor Donovan is an apology. <coughs> Uh, members, I will go to our reports. Um, I'm just wondering whether I should try and move it on block. Any item? <laughs> um, we'll go to item 4.1. <laughs> Adoption of the 2021-2022, sorry, I just thought I'd give it a business plan and budget. Um, and I will look to the floor for a mover. Councillor Knoll, I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham's a day. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak to it? Reserve. Uh, Councillor Abraham's a day. No reserve, thank you. Members, to the floor. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Knoll to sum up. No. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division. Division. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abraham today, and Councillor Hyde. Members, that takes us to 4.2, the adoption of valuations 2021 to 2022. Um, I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran. And a second to Councillor Mackey. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No, thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Mackey. Members? If not, I'll go to the mover to sum up. Sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. <laughs> Members, 4.3, declaration of rates 2021 to 2022. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. I will look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak to it? Yes, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you. Uh, members? Councillor Maroon? Um, I won't be voting for this, although I agree with the freezing of the rate in the dollar. Sorry, Councillor, can I get oh, to put your microphone on? Sorry, yes, I, I acknowledge that there is a freeze of the rate in the dollar um, that I brought in six years ago, but um, I do not agree with the abolition of the pensioner and self-funded retiree. Um, and I do not agree with the 10% uh, going up to 15%. Is that still in there? Or is that stated 10%? I thought that stated 10%. Grace, that's correct. Okay, it's just the pensioner and self-funded retire, self retiree then. Members, any other speakers? If not, I will go to the mover to summer. Okay. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. And uh, division? Council members, the division has been called. Those in favour, please stand and remain standing until names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abramsdale, and Councillor Hyde.
Members, that takes us to 4.4, which is the 2021-2022 business plan and budget review of general fees and charges. And I'll look to the four members for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Second to Councillor Abrahams today. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abrahams today? Members? If not, I'll go to the move to summer. Thank you. Um, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Just to remind members if you can put your microphone on so that we can further stream you. Um, we have 4.5, the adoption of the 2021-2022 long-term financial plan. And I'll look to the floor, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor, I have an alternate motion. An alternate motion. I'll seek a second, please. Members, a moment to thank you, Councillor Kieran. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Did you wish to speak to it? Yeah, certainly. Um, so this uh, keeps us within all of our parameters regarding our asset sustainability ratio, um, which is, of course, between 90 and 110 per cent. Um, this coming year, we're at 60%, so there's no impact on this year, but over the course of the long-term financial plan, um, uh, if we're operating at 90%, I think that will address some of the issues, which I also want to outline later in the next item, um, regarding infrastructure capability and delivery, um, because we've seen each year our infrastructure department, although they have been getting better, there is a substantial amount of carry forwards um, that occurs each year. Um, and I think we've seen uh, at times um, our infrastructure team uh, do a lot, um, but invariably there are some projects which aren't as well executed as we've seen um, uh, at audit committee regarding Gawler Place and then Quentin Kennehan and what have you. Um, I also think that while we're in the right in the middle of redoing all of our asset management plans, we've got the strategic asset management plan coming up in the next item, um, which will inform the rest of the asset management plans. Um, uh, and there's a, there's a huge amount of work to go into all of that. Um, I think it would be uh, wise of us to, one, align our infrastructure spend to something we know is more likely to be delivered in any one financial year, um, uh, uh, and two, um, allow a bit of breathing space for those plans to be uh, redrafted and then realised in their entirety. Um, uh, that's, well, that's what this measure of 90% will do. It is um, still in the green uh, from a local government um, uh, standards perspective, um, so I think it's uh, it's a good course of action. Uh, I'll leave it there, Lord Mayor. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, simply to say that uh, I think this is a uh, sensible rationalising of the LTFP. Uh, I do commend this uh, uh, alternate motion to councillors, uh, and I think this will actually enable the administration uh, to undertake projects of greater ease. Members. Councillor Mackey. Uh, question. Apologies, a question through you, Lord Mayor, um, to the Acting Chief Executive of the whoever um, she deems can best answer the question. Um, in respect of Councillor Hyde's <coughs> amendments uh, and the change of the, the asset ratio reset, um, I'd be grateful for a comment. Um, Claire, you've been uh, um, a witness to 20 years almost of um, council budgets. So my recollection from times past, every single year, uh, um, council and not just the LA City Council, local government finds it impossible to uh, achieve its, its intended capital spend because there are slippages for a whole range of um, reasons. Sometimes it's supply, sometimes it's, I'm answering my own question, I'd like, um, be grateful for a comment. Um, thank you through the through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, so um, our ability to deliver is influenced by the complexity of the project. So many of our major projects are obviously over more than one financial year. Um, and obviously during poor weather as well, that can often hold up um, our projects. I think um, what this does though is enable us to focus on um, moving towards a rolling asset renewal and delivery program that shows and steps out our capital spend over a longer period. Um, in terms of whether it's 90% or over 
up to 110%. We've ebbed and flowed um, as an organisation on um, exceeding um, the ratio um, and obviously next financial year being under the ratio um, due to financial uh, constraints. So um, it usually over the life of long term financial plan balances out, um, but I'm, I'm comfortable um, with what's being proposed tonight. Members? If not, I'll um, go. Sorry, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I think this is a scurrilous addition um, to put this in after we've consulted on the budget. We've had numerous uh, workshops to um, to suddenly uh, add something at this late time. I think it's is is classic Councillor Hyde behaviour. Councillor Moran, can we talk to the motion before you, please? Well, that, that the process is part of the. Um, the, what I'm complaining about, that these things hit us from Councillor Hyde late, late in the meeting, late in the process. We can only ask then our acting CEO to give a quick summary. We've got no uh, properly thought out response from the administration. We have no idea what the uh, implications may well be. I'm not saying clear that it hasn't been well thought out in a few seconds that you have to answer it. But I would rather have this uh, reported on and done properly. This has not been done properly. It's a high budget. It's not an administration. Councillor budget. Moran. Well, I'm just Cap saying. As I Councillor speak. Moran, please talk to the motion. And it's. I will not be voting for this in a pink fit. Thank you. Um, members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Well, yes, it is a high budget. It's um, surplus budget, modest surplus. I think it's a council started. budget, actually, <laughs> Councillor Hyde. Well, I'm just saying, if she wants to start putting labels it's a, on it, I'll it's take it. It's a council budget, <laughs> members, and um, it will be a decision of council when the decision is made. And council's made some very wise decisions over the last um, few months, which have resulted in us reducing our debt position by over $150 million over 10 years um, and getting back to surplus this coming year. Um, and I think Council made some fantastic decisions um, on the items that were put in front of them. Um, and I want to commend all the councillors that actively involve, or, you know, involve themselves in those discussions um, and thank the administration for their ongoing work. The, the key thing about this that is in front of us is that we are still going to be having, we are still going to be having a record infrastructure spend over the course of this 10 year plan, a record infrastructure spend. Um, that this council has decided to roll out, um, that this council, despite um, uh, the protestations of some of its members, we decided to put, to put, and it wasn't a unanimous vote, we decided to invest in our asset, manage, in our, um, our asset management and planning capability early on in this term of council. And that has then informed the evidence-based decision-making um, uh, that we then go about rolling out our asset management plans. And that's why we can have confidence that when we're saying deliver 90% and not 100%, we can have confidence that our administration are taking that evidence-based decision-making approach um, and they're looking at the things which are most critical um, uh, to upgrade. That's what this is about. This is about giving them uh, time to clear their full program. This is about ensuring that we're uh, budgeting to what we can, closer to what we can actually deliver as an organisation. Um, uh, and I think it's, and again, it's it's all green across the board. This is, this is within the parameters that are set down um, uh, within our Act, um, uh, and also the best practice as laid out by the local government association and other bodies. So, like I said, still a record infrastructure spend um, uh, within the accepted parameters. Um, that's what this is for. Thank you. Members to the floor for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until the names have been called. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Apprehensive and Councillor Hyde. <coughs> members, 4.6 is the adoption of the strategic asset management plan. Councillor Hyde and Councillor Canole. Sorry, Councillor Hyde, you have an alternate motion. Something missing from the top. Lord Mayor, I can see it. So something missing from the top. 
Um, if if you've sent it through to governments, then I will just hold for a moment. Sorry, we have yeah. Just I'm happy to read out the section. Is that, is that, is that, can you just have a look and see if that's correct? I'm not sure because I don't know what you sent. Um, yep, if you just remove the first sentence from that one, and yep, and delete, because that was in the previous one, and that is correct. So, members, um, I will look for a seconder. Once you've had a minute to read. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. I don't need a <laughs> and Councillor Hyde, if you'd like to speak to that. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. As I sort of foreshadowed a little bit earlier, um, this deals with a few things which I didn't feel were uh, as fleshed out in the Strategic Asset Management Plan um, uh, as I would have liked. Um, it's still it's still vast improvement on on, on the previous one, um, and I'm very very grateful that the team went out to consult with all various um, and important stakeholders and that's um, formed uh, the basis of the new SAMP. Um, uh, what, what this does at, um, at 2A, when we're talking about building delivery capability, um, it, it puts in place some arrangements so that we don't see the huge amount of carry forward um, that we have been seeing. Uh, certainly, if councillors remember my question on notice um, a few meetings ago, uh, the, the, the quantum of carry forwards over the last seven years that we went back um, was rather substantial, it was tens and tens and tens of millions. Um, uh, and that's obviously not an ideal scenario or not something we wish to see. I think it was in excess of 100 million um, off the top of my head. So that's what 2A deals with. Um, uh, 2B, uh, look, noting that, noting that in any one street in our council area, um, there are many different asset classes and subclasses, and it can be difficult to um, try and say look, along this street we want we want fantastic um, uh, assets on along Main Street, for example, as I've called out the motion. Um, this it, it's the most appropriate place to put it in the strategic asset management plan um, to talk about precincts overall and how we will then treat. Uh, the various classes and subclasses of assets within those precincts. And with this one, um, I'm sort of setting up uh, a process by which we can uh, designate particular precincts that should enjoy a higher level of service. Um, uh, for this, I've called out our main street zones in the first instance, but it establishes a, a principle and a process whereby we can designate other zones if we so please um, as premier precincts and we can then treat those assets accordingly and instead of councillors bringing individual motions one at a time to say i want new things here or i want a shiny thing there um, we can actually build it into our asset management planning that we will have um, premier precincts we will have parts of the city that look and feel um, of a higher standard and of a standard that i think is becoming of a capital city so um, uh, finally lord mayor 2c um, deals with uh, accessibility in the city um, uh, busting congestion um, accessing the city um, is really important this talks about uh, new and upgraded assets and, and projects um, in transportation uh, class and, and subclasses. And so that's talking about um, uh, roads, that's talking about you know, traffic lights and other things that you might find, for example, at an intersection, because we do, we do have pinch points um, when you're trying to come into the city, whether it's by car or whether it's by bike, um, and there could definitely be capacity improvements um, to those intersections. So we can move city and people in and out of the city um, more quickly at peak hour times, and that's what that one deals with. Councillor Abrahamston. Members. Members? Questions? Comments? If not, if, if you wish to speak, Councillor Moran. 
once again, not even respect of sending the other councillors uh, a copy of these before the meeting. I think it's ridiculous. It on the surface looks very innocuous, but we have no idea that the actual impact of these changes. So I won't be voting against. I won't be voting for it again. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Kerrin. Oh, to the contrary, what's just been stated, I don't think this is uh, ridiculous at all. And in fact, I think the councillors, or most of the councillors, have evinced uh, the capacity. Uh, to read and digest what is quite plainly uh, in plain English in front of them, uh, very worthy Councilor. goals, whereas what is in plain English in front of them, uh, very highly worthy goals, uh, and it makes complete sense uh, to incorporate these uh, in the um, SAMP. So I wholeheartedly support uh, these changes, and I think uh, there is no issue with timing whatsoever. Councillor Hyde. Oh, sorry, Councillor Adam, who's yeah. Councillor Moran, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think um, Councillor Hyde uh, elaborated earlier and also he's categorised it in a, in a clear manner. Um, but for the sake of um, other members and I guess the Chamber, uh, I wonder whether if um, uh, administration have any comments um, about this amendment at all or alternate motion. Acting CEO, I don't know if you heard that. It was Councillor Abraham today. I just wondered whether there was any comments you wanted to make on those on the alternate motion. Okay, members, Councillor Knapp. Just a, just a question around, uh, in, in, so it says in the first instance, current Main Street zones, uh, are they been determined? I mean, we have been talking about Main Streets in general, but uh, obviously the, a lot of the, the side streets and things like that are important to the same level. So are they, are they including that larger zone uh, at, this, at the first instance, or is that something to still be determined? Uh, thank you, to through, the, through the Chair. Um, I think it would be important for us to come back with some agreed definitions um, to make sure there's clarity and consistency uh, for us to be able to deliver to, to that. Okay, members? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Um, uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Just for just for you know total total clarity, um, as as previously stated, you know two A deals with the ability to deliver our infrastructure program um, uh, and the importance of where we have carry forwards, rectifying that um, carry forwards in the quantum that we've been seeing within the city of Adelaide. Certainly, in my time here. Um, uh, it, it actually ruins your ability to plan financially if you're saying that you're going to spend 50 million or more in any particular year, um, but you actually only deliver around 40 million dollars is actually what we as, a, as an institution can deliver, generally speaking. Um, uh, so we really need to work out a policy to deal with that. Um, uh, 2B, again, uh, main streets. Uh, I'm sure all councillors would agree that we need to be treating um, uh, our main streets as our, you know, as our, I think the wording I used was commercial, cultural and community um, precincts as those hubs. We need to be treating them uh, a little bit better. And that's the spirit within which, um, you know, this council has passed motions for master planning, which obviously the Lord Mayor is, is, is progressing at pace on with those respective round tables um, and they're yielding results. This is about a building into our SAMP and our um, subsequent asset management plans, what comes after the round table? What sort of investment are we going to be putting um, uh, into the physical elements, the urban elements um, on the street uh, and how we're going to be handling that? So I think that's um, that's definitely something that's been outlined as a priority of this council and I hope all councils will support um, uh, uh, these premier precincts. Um, and of course, busting congestion because we know that one of the biggest one of the biggest issues that visitors to the city have is actually just getting in and out. Um, and look, you know, we've, uh, we've got public transport. Sadly, we're not um, a big enough level of government to have a huge amount of influence on moving um, those levels of people in and out of the city. But one thing we can do is take care of our infrastructure um, and ensure that, it's, particularly at those pinch points where you have intersections. Um, uh, and elsewhere along the tracks into the city, um, we have enough capacity to accommodate traffic moving rather efficiently and also safely. And, and I envisage um, intersections that are 
uh, quicker and safer for cars, but also quicker and much safer for motorists. Because if we're going to go into an intersection um, and we're going to look at increasing capacity, then of course, naturally, we are going to think about um, uh, putting, you know, painting green on there so that bikes have a place to wait. We're going to think about putting in particular lights so that cyclists can uh, reclaim some space in the light cycles at intersections and those sorts of things. That's that's um, uh, what 2C um, is about. Um, otherwise, and more generally, uh, the strategic asset management plan is a, is a vast and wonderful improvement. Um, I, I note there's uh, this is probably the first strategic asset management plan where there has been such an emphasis on preparing us um, uh, for a change in climate, um, uh, as well as many other factors like uh, proper, proper business cases and private sector investment and that sort of thing. So I just want to commend all the staff involved on that. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, division. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing till all names have been called. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abraham today, and Councillor Hyde. Thank you, members. We have a few items on tonight's agenda. Three, in fact, uh, that are in confidence. So um, I need to uh, do consideration for each item to move for the order exclusion for the public. Um, so if I can have a move and a seconder to order the exclusion of the public for item 6.1.1, which is the 2021 business plan and budget review of commercial business fees and charges. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Seconded Councillor Abraham today. Members, not Councillor Knoll, summer. Sunder. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, a mover and a seconder for 6.1.2, which is Central Market Arcade Redevelopment Market Square. Councillor Knoll, seconded Councillor Kira. Councillor Knoll, did you speak? Mm -hmm. Members, if not, to the members to say summer. No. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. And the 6.1.3 presiding members report CEO update. Uh, members, if I could have a mover, thank you, Councillor Kira. Seconded, Councillor Knoll. Members, if not, to vote those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members of the public and staff, thank you for your attendance at this special meeting. Um, those not associated with item 6.1.1, 6.1.2 and 6.1.3, uh, I'll ask you now to please leave the Colonel Lightroom. The streaming will now cease while Council considers the final items on the agenda.